Hey guys, welcome back. I'm back, and so are you. And I really do appreciate you being here and watching today's episode. I really appreciate you sticking around for really the beginning of a new era for me. And let's just go ahead and get started. So last time I had a video was quite a while ago and I've had a lot of time to think and a lot of time to try to fix my camera. Currently I'm shooting on my iPhone XS Max instead of my regular digital camera. The reason why I'm shooting on just a standard digital camera or the reason why it was, was to get better video quality, plus so that I'd be able to review things like my phone. I like to make a lot of how-to videos and I like to have my phone on set just in case I need to look over notes or just in case I forgot to put something in my video. Now I have to use my iPad so I'm a little disoriented in terms of getting everything set up, but here we are. And we are going to be talking about the Surface Book 2. Now I don't know if you watched a video from last year, but I did a very long review video on the MacBook Pro late 2015. And this is my second laptop that I have had in my college career, which is again, the Surface Book 2. And I wrote down what I thought about it and I wrote down the issues that I was experiencing while having the device. So the Surface Book 2 is a two-in-one, but also a workstation computer, or at least that is what is stated in the description for that product. Now, is it a workstation? We will be answering that question later on in this video towards the closing. But what we will be talking about right now is, well, the overall opinion. Honestly, I'm undecided because it is both a really well productive tool, but it also isn't what it was supposed to be. So we got to talk about that in this video. So first, let's go over the pros for the device. The first thing has got to be the design. I love the keyboard and trackpad. Not only does it have a really nice travel when you're typing, but it is incredibly comfortable using the device. It has curved edges along the keyboard, so your hands aren't rested flat on the surface, which can be uncomfortable over time, especially when you're taking hour long lectures. It's not that hard to press in the keys, but it is still a tactile feel. It's very similar to what I had for the MacBook Pro 2015, and it's very different from the butterfly keyboards that are in the newer MacBook Pros. One of the things I do miss about Mac computers is the trackpad. But honestly, compared to the 2015 MacBook Pro I had, the trackpad is not really that much different. It's around the same amount of size, but the features are significantly different. It might not be solid state, but it still feels like it was. Because with the solid state, it would still give you a tap the feedback, which was nice at times, but I kind of miss that tactile feel. And I'm kind of happy that I still have that coming around with the Surface Book 2. Another positive, or sorry, another pro to the Surface Book 2 are the ports. So it's kind of a win-win situation at hand because you do get to keep the SD card slot, you get two USB ports, and you have a USB-C port, which again, is really helpful. Now, kind of the downside with that is there is no Thunderbolt 3, but we're gonna get to that later. But the ports, being able to still have USB compared to USB-C, it's nice to have the option where you can use either one without the need of an adapter. But speaking of adapters, I actually did buy an adapter for my machine and I use it whenever I am sitting at my desk. It allows me to have HDMI, more USB ports, plus Ethernet. So the final pro is the tablet mode, but also a little bit more with the design. 
With the Surface Book 2, you can detach it from the keyboard, allowing you to use it as a tablet or as a computer, which is both helpful but kind of gimmicky. When I looked at my computer for the first time, I knew that I had picked a beautiful designed computer. It felt durable, it felt really similar to a Mac, but as time went by, it really did change, which we'll get to later in this video. But in overall first impressions for the computer, I was really happy that I wasn't picking something that was slow in performance or wasn't doing it for me. That being said, with the tablet mode, it is very convenient to be able to draw. Being an art student, there are a lot of times where I have to do a quick storyboard or I have to jot down notes that I would like to handwrite and it's nice to have the option to detach it from the keyboard and use it as a tablet. Now that has made using my iPad Pro less efficient in terms of what I can do with it because I can use an entire computer operating system instead of iOS to take notes during class. There are benefits and downsides to that, but overall it is a much different experience and it's a little nice to be able to go back and forth just by attaching a keyboard. That being said, you can detach the display, flip it over, click it back into the keyboard and use it kind of like a Cintiq, as long as you have an external keyboard and mouse, of course, because then you're kind of stuck with what you got, which is just a tablet screen. When you are connected to the keyboard, you are connected to the GPU. And what that helps is with performance and graphics, which in this case is a very much needed bonus. Okay, we have to talk about cons, which is not what I was hoping this video would be. The GPU inside the Surface Book 2 is different from a normal GPU that you would have in a laptop. Yes, I know there's a difference between a desktop GPU and a laptop GPU. One is pretty much soldered into the motherboard, it is a chip, while the other is an actual card, has fan systems, it's properly cooled, and a bunch of other performance things that, well, you knew you were getting into when getting a laptop versus a desktop. But this is a whole worse situation here. So the Surface Book 2 does not have a standard graphics card. We knew that already, it's a laptop. But what you didn't know is that it requires special updates. Literally, that's it. And you're probably thinking, well, I don't normally update my computer. That will be a problem for this device. Because when you don't decide to update it, the graphics card will sometimes shut off completely. And that is what happened to me for several months where I had 0% running on the GPU. I kept trying to install drivers. I kept erasing them and putting them back on and nothing was working. I eventually brought it to Microsoft directly in their store and they had to wipe the entire device and I had to reinstall everything. And then I was able to install one update. Why does it require that for one update for a driver that normally should be updating automatically when you install the NVIDIA automatic installer? You can't do that with the Surface Book 2. With that being said, when the GPU wasn't working, which was quite often for my unit that I was using for a year now, it would overheat because it started using the Intel chip that was inside the device. Despite having the maxed out model with the maxed out processing and storage and GPU, it was still not fast enough. It was still better than the MacBook Pro 2015. So I still have a better machine than I did before. Unfortunately, it's not enough to actually do what I needed. Now, I'm not saying that it is slow because it is rather fast, especially when you're multitasking and web browsing. What's not fast is the performance, such as watching a YouTube video. The amount of times where it will just freeze frame and jump back into a video is incredibly frustrating. 
with the overheating, I could be watching an episode on Netflix such as Daredevil or really any other show. I'm blanking out on names. I could be watching a show or a movie and in about five minutes, my computer is hot. And I mean hot. So you're probably thinking, well, you're not gonna be really touching the computer so much, so why do you need to worry about it? Or if you're drawing, I could be doing just a basic sketch in Photoshop and you can already see the screen jumping across the page whenever you scroll up and down on your canvas. Believe me, it's really annoying, especially when you have to do this constantly for school and for work. It is, incredibly frustrating. So with the overheating, you constantly have to put your hand on the screen and feel that heat. When it's cold, it's kind of nice, but it's not always cold when I'm working. So can we maybe not have that issue? Cause that'd be very much appreciated. So I know I talked about ports being a pro before in this video, but it is also a con that there is no Thunderbolt 3. I would like to get the most out of my GPU when it's working so that I can get the maximum performance. Now, keep in mind, if you do decide to buy a GPU, make sure your computer has Thunderbolt 3 before trying to use it. That way, it'll actually work. Without Thunderbolt 3, you cannot use an external GPU. You have to have that Thunderbolt 3 port in order to support a Thunderbolt 3 GPU. I did not try using one, but I talked with several technicians to figure out how the USB-C port was so universal, but can't use an external GPU. I thought that was a little interesting that they put so much work into the USB-C port and not optimize it. Here's an issue that I've had that I don't know if most users have experienced. The power button. Sometimes the power button will just not work. Whenever I am done either rendering a project or I was overhousing it for two hours, I don't like to restart or sometimes shut off my machine for a little while and then turn it back on when I'm ready to work again. Now the issue is that the power button sometimes won't respond. I hold down the button and nothing happens. I think that's a little weird that the power button feels a little cheap too, to add on top of it not working. But the fact that the, the fact that the power button just doesn't work sometimes is kind of aggravating when you constantly have to turn it on and off throughout your work style. That made absolute no sense. The, the problem with the Surface Book 2 is that I want to love it, but I can't because of my issues that I've had. And if you had these similar issues, you should leave a comment down below. With the Surface Book 2, it got to the point where since the GPU was so on and off with functioning and disconnecting from the device, it would just shut off. I'd be opening Safari, not Safari, this is a PC. I'd be open up Google Chrome and type in Google and my computer would go to a blue screen of death. You've probably seen this on my Twitter feed and Instagram feed about me just being really mad at my computer. It's gotten to the point where I can't even use it for what I need it, which just completely defeats the purpose of having the device. Now, it could just be a bad one. Maybe I just got a lemon, or maybe this is actually the design of the computer that is just not optimized or it's not ready to be out there in the world. So really what I have to ask is, is the Surface Book 2 ready or did I just pick up the wrong machine? Now, every other update, one or two issues are fixed. Right now, my device is not crashing, but 
it's incredibly frustrating that the next update and install could bring that issue back up again. This issue's gotta be fixed. Maybe with the next device, they will fix it, or maybe they're gonna keep with the Surface Book 2 and optimize the hardware. I really would like to see this issue fixed. Maybe I'll just be swapping out the device, but I am definitely going to give it at least another month to see if these issues persist or to see if they end completely due to updates. Okay, so final verdict. Surface Book 2 is a good machine, but it is not a workstation. And that, that does it for today's episode. I thank you all for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. See you later. I don't have an ending catchphrase, and kind of makes me sad. Thank you.